In this video, we're going to complete an example using a future value table, which we can see below. But before we get into the example, I want to explain how this table works. This table makes annuity calculations really simple and easy to make, which is great. The problem being that you're limited to solve only certain annuity problems. You'll notice that it only applies to a regular repayment of a dollar. And I'll give you a quick example. Let's say that you want to make regular repayments of one dollar every year. And let's say that the bank offers you an interest rate of 3% per year and let's say you do this over a period of five years now if you look at the table we can see where three percent is three percent is up here and we can see where five years are or five periods it's over here and we can see that they line up to a certain number 5.309. Now, what we learn from this is that if you invest $1 every year for five years with an interest rate of 3%, by the end of five years, you will have accumulated this amount of money. Now, if we were to round this, it would be about $5.31. So we'll say it's approximately $5.31. That you have accumulated in your investment account. Now you might say, well, who makes one dollar repayments? Most of our questions are different to that. For example, let's say we're making repayments of a thousand dollars. What would a thousand dollars accumulate to over five years at an interest rate of three percent per annum? Well, it's actually quite easy because all we need to do is take our 1000 and times it by the amount we can see here. We're going to times it by 5.309. Let's see what we get 1000 times 5.309, and we get $5,309. So it's great that this is based on repayments of $1 because all we need to do is multiply whatever number we get from this table by the repayment amount in each question. So let's go straight into example one. So we're going to answer about four questions, A, B, C and D, and we're going to refer to the table that I showed you in the previous slide. Question A says, Harry makes repayments of $6,500 at the end of each year into a bank account which has an interest rate of 3.5% per annum. So I'm going to underline things as I go. Here's my repayment, D. Here's my interest rate, R. You'll notice that it's compounded annually, so we don't need to make any changes here. And it's saying, what will be the value of his investment after five years? So we'll underline this as well. So remember that 3.5%, five years, and let's go back to our table. Here's 3.5% and here's our five years. And what do they line up with? They line up with 5.362. So we'll write that down, 5.362. And once we've got our magic number, all we need to do is multiply it by our repayment, which is $6,500. 5.362 times $6,500. And we get $34,853. $34,853. So what do we learn from this? If we make repayments of $6,500 over a period of five years with an interest rate of 3.5% per annum, 
this is how much money we will have in our investment account by the end of this period of five years. All right, let's move on to question B. It says, what is the future value of an investment when $2,300 is deposited? So this is our repayment. And it's deposited at the end of each quarter for two years. Now, we need to be careful here. It's done quarterly. Now, there are four quarters in a year. So the number of time periods N is 2 times 4, which gives us 8 quarters. Next, it says that the interest is compounded quarterly at an interest rate of 6% per annum. So our interest rate R is 6% but it needs to be divided by four because there's four quarters in a year. Six divided four is 1.5. So this comes out to 1.5% per quarter rather than 6% per annum or per year. Now we need to remember these two values. We need to remember N and we need to remember our interest rate of 1.5% as we go back to our table. So we've got eight periods and an interest rate of 1.5% and they line up with the number 8.433. So all we do is take this number 8.433 and multiply it by our repayment which is $2,300. Eight point four three three times two thousand three hundred dollars comes to nineteen thousand three hundred and ninety five dollars and ninety cents. So if we deposit two thousand three hundred dollars every quarter over a period of two years, which is eight quarters compounded quarterly at 6% per annum, this is how much money we will have in our investment account by the end of the two years. Let's now move on to question C. Janet needs to save a total of $4,921.60 to pay for some furniture she purchased on credit. So this is actually a future value amount. She's trying to get to this point. So I'll write that down that our future value is $4,921.60. She has six months to raise the money. So I bet that our number of time periods N is going to be six and we'll be more specific. It's six months. Her bank has offered her a savings account with an interest rate of 12% per annum compounded monthly. So what we're going to do to calculate R, our interest rate, we've got to take our percentage, this is our yearly percentage, and divide it by 12 so that we can convert it to a monthly percentage. This will actually just give us 1% per month. So I'm going to remember these two values, our 6 for the number of time periods and our interest rate of 1%. And I'm going to go back to my table and circle these 1% and 6. And they're going to line up to 6.152. Now, going back to question C, the magic number, I guess you could call it, that we got was 6.152. So normally what we do is we take our repayment, we multiply it by this magic number, and this gives us our future value. Now, we don't know the repayment, but we know the future value. We know that it's going to equal $4,921.60. So to find our repayment, we need to divide both sides by 6.152. And when we do that, it's going to cancel the 6.152 on the left. I'm just going to give myself a little bit of room here. 
and then we're going to get D or our repayment equals and we just need to calculate this part over here on the right. $4,921.60 divide 6.152 gives us a repayment of $800. So if Janet hopes to save $4,921.60 over a period of six months with an interest rate of 12%, then she needs to make repayments of $800. Now there's something I want to point out here that I probably should have mentioned earlier. Notice how it talks about the repayment being at the end of the month or the end of the time period. This particular table that we've been using only works when the repayment is at the end of the time period. If you get questions where the repayment is made at the beginning of the time period, then you would get a completely different table. Anyway, let's now move on to question D. George made regular repayments of $3,180 biannually. That means twice a year. So we'll write down that our repayment D is $3,180. And he's putting this into his bank account at the end of each period. It says that by the end of two years, uh, this is the number of time periods, Remembering we're doing this biannually, twice a year, so we need to times this by two. So we've got four time periods going here. So by the end of two years, he's accumulated $13,206.54. That's our future value. So future value is $13,206.54. And they want you to find the interest rate that he received. So we've got our time periods and looking back at our table, we'll circle four, the number of time periods, but we don't know what interest rate it is. So it's got to be one of these numbers along here. At the moment, we don't know which one. Now, you might remember that to go from your repayment to your future value, you had to multiply by some sort of a magic number which we'll call X because we like to use the pronumal X to represent an unknown. Now we know what our repayment is. Our repayment is 3180 and when we multiply it by our magic number which we don't know we get our future value $13,206.54. So to find this magic number we need to divide both sides by 3180. This will cancel out 3180 on the left and on the right we will find the solution for x. 13,206.54 divided by 3180 comes to 4.153. So x is 4.153, and when we go back to our table, remembering that we've got four time periods, this is where you will find 4.153. So our interest rate must be 2.5%. Now I've just created a little bit of room here. Our interest rate is 2.5%, but remember that this is biannually. So it's 2.5% by annually, or if it was yearly, it's 5% per annum because we simply doubled our percentage. Anyway, that concludes our video on example one. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.